Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, in this one, we're going to set up some orientation data. So please follow along carefully. And we're also going to add a condition for our crouching state. So simply open up your component. And we're going to get rid of this flip flop. And we're going to drag these two down to the right. Now we're going to add a branch and connect this up to the pressed. And we're going to, from the get owner get component by class we are going to search for is falling because we only want to be able to crouch if we are not already crouching and if we are not falling or jumping so is falling we're going to say not and from the character we're going to get is crouched it's a replicated variable I'm going to disconnect these two and I'm going to search for and and connect this knot here. We also want to duplicate this knot and connect it to the is crouched because we want to be able to crouch if we are not already crouching. Just straighten things up a bit. Nice. And I'm going to connect this to my branch. If it's true, we crouch. And if it's false, we uncrouch. Right. Uh, the target for both of these are going to be the as character. So I'm going to drag this here, create a neat little reroute pin. And that is all for this condition. If you compile and save and you hit play, now you can see it works exactly the same. Now, uh, let's head to our enums folder I believe we already created this orientation direction so if you head to your anim blueprint in your blueprint tread safe update animation in your set owner data function I believe this is where we set the orientation direction variable so yeah I'm gonna close everything off just to keep things neat and what we need to do is create a small little function, well, a few functions actually. So, um, this one is going to be deduct orient values. And we're going to need a few variables for this. I'm going to add a sequence. and ensure that this function is a tread safe function. We're going to get our direction variable and we want to say minus and we're going to duplicate this minus three more times. So one, two, three and connect direction to all of them. Now, for the first one, we're going to promote to a variable and we're going to call this forward. So, my direction minus zero will mean I'm, I'll be going forward. Now, we need to calculate for the rest of them. So, if I minus 180, then I will be going backward. So, the value here will be 180. Uh, for left, I'll be minusing minus 90 and for the right, I'm going to be minusing 90. Just input 90 like so. I'm going to connect this up. You can eat this function up, it's up to you, but hit compile, save. And I can close this function out. We're going to create another function and this one is going to be called select uh, orientation. So give me a sec. 
uh, select orientation direction. Right, and it's going to require a few inputs. First one is going to be of type enum orientation direction. I'm going to call this new direction. We're going to require two more variables. The first one is going to be float as well as the second. And this one is going to be called min and the other one will be max. Right, and from the, we're going to get the direction variable again. And we're going to search for in range float. And we're going to check if the direction is within the range from in between the minimum and the maximum values. And we're going to ensure that inclusive min and inclusive max is set to true. We're going to add a branch. And we are also going to add a reroute, another reroute, uh, an output, sorry. An output pin is going to be of type boolean. And we want to call this return value. Now, off of the false pin, we simply want to return false, right? Off of the true pin, we need to duplicate our orientation direction variable. And we're going to call this last orientation direction. And we are going to set this. We are going to set this last orientation direction to our current orientation direction variable. And then we are going to set our orientation direction variable as the input to our function, which is new direction. Like so. And we are going to return true. Hit compile and save. And you can close this out. Uh, we have one last function to create. And this one is going to be called set directions. Now we need to get our select orientation direction function. Plug it up here. Oh, again, uh, the set directions function is going to be a thread safe as well as the select orientation direction function. Now, for forward, the value is going to be minus 70 to 70. We're gonna add a branch. And if this is false, then we want to duplicate this and connect it up to the false. We're going to duplicate it again and connect it up to the false. And lastly, we simply need to call the orientation direction variable off of the false bin here, and we're going to set it to backwards. Right, so let's set the values up. So forward is minus 70 to 70. Uh, for right, Let's do right. Right will be 70 to 110. Uh, for the left, we're going to do minus 110 to minus 70. Right. And we're going to add this to our blueprint thread safe update animation function. So let's add the set directions function and the deduct orient values function. Now if you compile and save, you shouldn't have any errors and everything will be working just fine. In our next video, we're going to set up a few more uh, settings here in our atom graph so we can drive the starting and stopping animations. Um, before we close this video, however, 
head to your head to edit and plugins and we need to enable a few plugins for our orientation warping and stuff like that so in plugins head down to the animation section and we want to enable uh, the animation locomotion library ensure that animation modifier library is also enabled because we will be using this later on enable animation warping and I believe that is it yeah that is it so ensure that all of these are enabled it will prompt you to restart your project please do so and we can continue in the next video all right guys so yeah see ya